to my Christian friends. You believe that your God has orchestrated a divine plan for his creation, and that all events which either have taken place or will take place were foreseen by this God with infallible certainty and taken into consideration for this plan. You believe that this plan is motivated heavily by God's unwavering love for his creation and his desire for us to lead healthy, ethical lives followed by an eternity of happiness alongside him in heaven. You also believe that your God is perfect and sovereign, and as such you believe that as mere human beings we have no grounds to critique or question this plan, that any flaw or inadequacy we may find in the plan is attributable to our imperfections as sinful, arrogant, rebellious, finite beings. So, that in mind, I want to take a moment to remind you of what this plan essentially is, because I think that you rarely afford yourself the opportunity to step back and appreciate it as a whole. So, without further ado, here it is. God's perfect plan for his creation, the big checklist in the sky. Take a look. Decide to arrange for something other than yourself to exist. Check. Create a being by the name of Lucifer with full knowledge that this being will betray you and ultimately cause an infinite amount of suffering unnecessarily. Check. Allow an unfathomably horrific dimension of existence known as hell to emerge, created by yourself or perhaps Lucifer, and allow that dimension to continue existing. Do not override or prevent such a thing. It will come into play later. Check. Create objective, unchanging moral prescriptions and base them upon whatever your nature happens to be, and then label any action or thought contrary to these standards sin. Check. Be sure to include in these moral prescriptions edicts for social and psychological health, such as encouragement to beat one's children with a rod, permission to buy and sell slaves and will them as property to one's children for life, requirement that women not be allowed to teach or have authority over men, and of course, the instruction to kill anyone who expresses interest in worshipping other gods. Check. Design a physical universe, planets, animals, and vegetation all with the appearance of age. Be sure to include in your creation biological flaws, redundancies, and overcomplications that appear as if they were the product of blind cumulative processes, perhaps a, a urinary tract that runs straight through the prostate gland, or an unnecessary appendix prone to inflation and rupturing, or maybe a respiratory and digestive system forced to share the same plumbing. These are just a few working ideas. Check. Create a garden with a tree in it bearing fruit that, when eaten, provides knowledge of your objective moral standards. Then create two sentient cognitive beings without knowledge or awareness of these standards and instruct them not to eat from the tree which would enlighten them. In other words, arrange it so that only after they eat from the tree are they capable of understanding that doing so was a violation of objective moral standards. Check. Warn these cognitive beings that they will undoubtedly die if they eat from this tree. But don't follow through if they do. Endow a reptile with vocal cords, lips, or some other means of speaking audibly to your cognitive beings, enabling it to make a convincing case to one of them for eating from the tree. Do not prevent this or intervene. Check. Now by this point, make sure that your cognitive beings have been equipped for reproducing themselves and multiplying. And because one of them has sinned, arrange that every single one of their descendants until the end of time will be born with an inherent sinful nature defaulting in a future of everlasting torment. Do not, by any means, allow each of them to be born with a clean slate and the capacity for living a sin-free life if they desire, as you did with your first two prototypes. Check. Endow these cognitive beings with a soul, which keeps their thoughts and feelings and other cognitive faculties in existence forever, one way or another. And then allow the sinfulness of these beings to be incompatible with your presence, and let hell be the only other place they can go once they exit the physical world. Do not make any attempt to spare these souls the eternal torment of hell, such as allowing souls to stop existing altogether, or creating an additional realm for them to reside besides with you or in hell. Check! Over time, allow these beings to populate the earth you have created, knowing with infallible certainty, of course, that after so many generations they will disappoint you enough that you find it necessary to kill all of them in a global flood and start all over from scratch. Check. Now, when this happens, again, right on schedule, make an exception for one small family of cognitive beings whom you deem righteous. Of course, it goes without saying that your powers of omniscience allow you to know, again, with infallible certainty, that this family, too, will ultimately disappoint you in the same way as those you drowned, rendering the entire endeavor futile. But for now, it's best that you pretend not to know that. Check. 
Instruct this small disappointment of a family to populate the entire world all over again by way of incest. Check. Declare that, until further notice, the only way for these cognitive beings to rectify their sinful nature while on Earth is to perform ritual animal sacrifices and other acts of senseless violence. Additionally, when certain sins are committed by any one of your cognitive beings, demand that the surrounding community kill that being themselves. Check. In the meantime, perform many epic miracles for all to see and intervene often with your physical creation. Stop the sun in the sky, part the Red Sea, turn rivers into blood and women into pillars of salt, give men superhuman strength, speak to the thousands with a booming voice from heaven, etc. But before these cognitive beings become advanced enough in the areas of science and communication that they could actually document, share, play back, and verify these epic miracles, make sure you stop performing them altogether. Check. Decide at some point that the most pressing of your objective moral prescriptions are not as obvious to these cognitive beings as you once thought. Take this opportunity to chisel your top ten moral concerns into two tablets of stone and commission one of your cognitive beings to deliver these tablets to the masses. Note to self, roughly half of these moral concerns should center around pleasing you, praising you, and remaining loyal to you. Check. After several thousand years, impregnate one of these cognitive beings so that she gives birth to your son in physical form who also happens to be you at the same time. Check. Allow this cognitive being, who is your son but also you, to grow up and make several revisions to you slash your son's original standards of morality. Then arrange for other cognitive beings to torture and kill you slash your son. Authorize this sacrifice of yourself to yourself as a means of granting all other cognitive beings immunity from the consequences of their sinful nature, which you allowed them to be born with in the first place. Check. Do not, however, make this sacrifice free. Establish that none of these cognitive beings shall be eligible for the benefits of this sacrifice unless they actively believe that it happened. In other words, despite the quality of their intentions, any cognitive being henceforth who finds themselves unconvinced that these events actually took place is unwittingly designating themselves for the endless suffering of hell. Check. That established, be sure to refrain from making it clear and knowable to the rest of the world that these events actually took place. Ensure that no cognitive being born after the first century has the luxury of witnessing your son, who is also you, say or do anything to indicate he was a living god. Again, make sure that all of this occurs before the advancements in science and technology are available to verify for those who aren't present. Check. Arrange so that the only surviving record of these events will be authored anonymously by non-eyewitnesses translated to a language different from the one you slash your son will speak written no earlier than 30 years after you slash your son performs these miracles and makes these claims. However, do make sure that these records feature the precept that believing in something without evidence is morally superior to investigation and verification. Check. Be sure that after only a few decades, the only accounts of these events in existence are copies of copies of copies, which will be verifiably altered and added to in historically and theologically significant ways from generation to generation, sect to sect. Do not preserve the original copies of these accounts. Do not protect them from revision. Do not set in place any mechanism for protecting them against being interpreted in hundreds upon hundreds of ways, most of which being heretical and therefore punishable. Check. Do not bother to employ your omniscience in such a way as to discern which of these cognitive beings are truly rebelling and which simply don't know how to distinguish you from other versions of God which do not in fact exist but are attributed the same claims of exclusivity. Check. Do not make it clear to these beings that you're even here. Allow for your very existence to remain an easily debatable, easily questionable, easily doubtable proposition. Allow for billions and billions of souls to be unthinkably tortured for all of eternity regardless of their character, integrity, bravery, responsibility, or conduct because they had not correctly assumed that the right set of propositions were true by the time their lives on earth were over. Check. And finally, when all is said and done, demand that you be praised for this plan. Check.